Right, today's music is courtesy of Gordon Forbes, one of my very talented viewers. So any complaints about the music today, and Gordon and I will send the boys round. I'm not actually sure what this music is called, but it was written, performed and recorded by Gordon and his daughter. And I have to say, when I heard it, I thought it was very much in keeping with today's video. Thank you very much, sir, and I have to say, you lot never cease to amaze me. In a good way, obviously. Now, it's not just this piece of music that's wowed me. It's viewers in general, some of the comments that I get back. I always thought that the only thing we had in common was motorcycles. But the more I speak to you guys, the more I read your comments, the more I start to realise that there is a sort of kindred mindset between a lot of us. More things in common than I originally thought. A week or two ago I made the video about you know why you should ride a modern classic motorcycle and I used the fountain pen as part of an analogy. One thing that struck me in a lot of those comments you know first of all was the amount of people who have recently switched over to fountain pens or have never given them up in the first place. And also quite a few mentions of mechanical watches in the same vein as part of the same subject. A sort of a neoclassical movement. The re-adoption of technology and fan engineering that may have been superseded by other things. But I think that there's a general realisation that new technology isn't always better. It's not always a good thing. And I think, in essence, what people are doing is rejecting our disposable society, our disposable throwaway consumerism, and returning back to older technology, sound engineering, products with heart and soul, technology with a provenance that can last for decades, and may even become family heirlooms, products that create a pride of ownership that modern products just can't give you. Now, when it comes to wristwatches, I've got a bit of a bad record. A nasty habit of wrecking them in short time. So to that end, even as a young man, I got into the habit of buying new watches quite regularly, at least once a year. In order to replace the latest watch that had become, you know, a casualty or victim of my lifestyle. I've never had the money to buy expensive watches. I've never really had the inclination, to be quite honest. I know people buy watches that cost thousands of pounds. I've never been in that league, nowhere near it. But having only a working man's budget for such a timepiece, that didn't mean that I bought rubbish. I think if you have an appreciation for fine precision engineering, in a way that any motorcyclist worth his salt does, just holding a watch and looking at it, can give you a pretty good idea of its quality and at the end of the day you don't have to pay huge amounts for quality not if you know where to look now I'm not a watch expert and I'm not really a watch collector but I have accrued a few watches over the years and one criteria that I sort of developed over the years is that it had to work with me as a motorcyclist. As I've explained in the past I've got big arms, big wrists, big hands. I often have to buy motorcycle jackets that are a couple of sizes up from what I would normally wear just so that I can get my arms into the sleeves. And even then, I often find that the cuffs are a bit tight. Now, add that to a pair of motorcycle gloves, and the watch you choose is quite important. I've done it, and I'm sure you've all done it. You buy a big, bulky, flashy diver's watch, and then find, you know, you can't get your gloves on, and you can't fasten your cuffs up on your bike jacket. So, many moons ago, this became a dilemma that I needed to solve. I needed a wristwatch that was slim enough to fit underneath a jacket and gloves with reasonable ease. A watch that was built to withstand my lifestyle. You know, a tough tool watch and a watch of a design that suited my personality. I'm not one for glitzy dress watches, that's just not me at all. But it needed to be a watch with a reasonably large dial, not because I've got bad eyesight, but 
because if you stick a 36 or 38 millimeter wristwatch on my eight and a half inch wrists it ends up looking like I've bought a lady's Mickey Mouse watch and the style of watch I eventually settled on was the field watch field watches are all derived from military watches of the Second World War era in fact World War II was the era where wristwatches became popular for military use wristwatches had to be dependable they had to be accurate they had to be tough and they had to be easy to read they weren't designed to impress or show off they were designed for a very specific task they were designed to be used in combat and they had to withstand that essentially they were a tool watch now just like a lot of other people that are watching this video i've only ever really had quartz watches cheap and impeccably accurate timepieces that have absolutely no soul whatsoever and in 99 percent of cases if anything goes wrong with them they're not repairable it's a throw it away and buy a new one job and five or six years ago i spotted this little seiko field watch from their snz g series which i think were introduced to the worldwide market in the mid 1990s so it's been around for a while and it's a very proven design in fact the snz g's are part of the seiko 5 series which has a fantastic reputation for long life low maintenance and accuracy now the reason i say low maintenance is that this is not a quartz watch and if you flip it over there's a very nice exhibition case back displaying one of seiko's famous automatic mechanical movements a 23 dual mechanical marvel of precision miniature engineering the beating heart of this watch is the Seiko 7S36C movement a movement that is known worldwide for being a mechanical long-term workhorse that can go for decades without any servicing it's pretty much maintenance free this sand or desert storm version of the watch that caught my eye five or six years ago and I hesitated it was available on Amazon for a really good price I think it was less than 80 pounds which for an automatic with an exhibition case back is unheard of the thing is I've never owned an automatic watch before I'd grown up on a diet of quartz watches and I wasn't sure whether an automatic was for me or not so I held off and then the price went up and up and up and it just kept going the reason being that the world is full of people like me who are turning back to traditional products and just like the modern classic motorcycle and the fountain pen sales of automatic watches are on the rise it's a sort of horological renaissance with people like me and maybe like you rejecting quartz timepieces and going back to the satisfaction and soul that only a mechanical movement can give to cut a long story short i missed my chance imports into the uk of this particular series of watch dried up and i just couldn't get hold of one not for a price that i was willing to pay anyway but i did keep my eyes open now that sand or desert storm version didn't come up for sale again not for a long time but i did spot this this is the standard black faced version now altogether the do four versions there's the sand color the black version like this one they also do a blue and a sort of an army green now i bought this one from watch nation which is a uk jewelers and authorized seiko dealer prices do fluctuate but i managed to snap it up for about 160 pounds which believe me is a good price and i also got the sand version from watch nation later on when it became available these watches have a case width of about 41 millimeters which is sort of a magic number where watches are concerned 40 to 41 is about my limit any smaller than that and they just look too small on my wrists but this is also a good size if you have a much slimmer wrist the case is cnc machined from a 316l stainless steel and it's been vapor blasted in true military style so that the enemy doesn't see your watch glinting in the sunlight 
and the glass or crystal is a hardlex crystal which is Seiko's own proprietary hardened mineral crystal which purportedly sits somewhere between sapphire and mineral crystal for hardness and scratch resistance. It's also water resistant down to 100 meters with a power reserve once fully wound of around 40 hours. I don't think that Seiko have any actual history or provenance with military or field watches. This is a homage watch, but it is very nicely done. As a nod to modernity, they do have a date and date complication, and both the hands and the chapter ring feature Seiko's own very famous Lumibrite luminescent pen which is still very readable even after eight hours now i should add that this is a basic automatic movement it doesn't have hand winding and hacking but i haven't found that to be a problem both of these seem pretty accurate the gain three to five seconds a day which sounds like a lot but it's very rare, even in our busy modern lives, that you need that kind of time accuracy. And I found that I only realistically need to adjust either of these watches about once every two weeks. And it has actually become a sort of an old time ritual that I do look forward to and enjoy. Now, you shouldn't let the appearance or the colour of straps influence you when buying any watch. The sand coloured watch does have its original strap on it, but the strap on the dark coloured one has been replaced. There are quite literally hundreds of strap options available on the internet today for not a lot of money and it's often worth having two or three different coloured ones so that you can swap and change it. You would be amazed at the different personalities that can be given to the same watch just by swapping the straps. I've come to realise whilst running this channel that modern classic bike ownership isn't just about the bike. For many it's an entire lifestyle. It's just as much about the accessories that we put on our bikes or the clothes that we wear. You know, goggles, helmets, jackets, boots, styles and designs which in some cases are modern classics in their own right. And the Seiko 5 range which has been around since the 1960s is definitely a modern classic. It is a watch with a classic heritage and a classic look. But like so many things in our modern lives, that classic look is not out of place in a modern environment. I personally would be lost without a wristwatch, but it saddens me when I look around and see that so many people these days rely on the mobile phones that don't wear wristwatches. For me, a mobile phone is a necessary evil. I use it as little as I can get away with. And when it comes to finding out what time it is, I prefer to use the correct tool for the job. If I want to tell the time, I use a watch. If I want to take a picture or take video, I use the right tools for the job. I use a proper camera. Unfortunately, to a large degree, mobile phones are a necessity in modern society. But I refuse to relinquish every aspect of my life to a mobile phone. Now, if you live in the States, or just about any other country for that matter, you should be able to get these watches pretty cheaply. If you live in the UK, as you know, we pay through the nose for anything like this to compare to anywhere else. And as far as I've been able to tell, Watch Nation is the only authorised Seiko dealer in the UK that actually stocks this model of watch. Now, this is not a sales pitch. I bought these watches with my own money. I'm not getting any kickbacks or commissions from sales. I'm just bringing this to your attention for those that might be tempted. Now, I did approach Watch Nation to see if they were able to offer some sort of channel discount. Unfortunately, they do sell these watches well under the recommended retail price and they weren't able to help me with that. But I do assure you, their price is the best price you will get in the UK if you live in the UK. So I will, of course, leave a link to these watches on their website in the video description down below. 
Now, you can, of course, if you wish, go down the great import route. There are plenty of opportunities online. But do bear in mind, there will be VAT and import duty on there, as well as some administration fees from couriers. I've looked at this prospect from every different angle, but usually you will end up paying more. You're also going to forfeit any meaningful customer care, as well as your statutory rights as a consumer, and in all probability, any meaningful warranty. It's up to you. Right, I thoroughly enjoyed making this video and just showcasing some of my time pieces. I do have one or two more I would like to show you if you're interested in the future. Variety is the spice of life and it does for me make things a lot more interesting the more I diversify. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video and in doing so helping to support this channel. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Now if you do subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell and ensure in your settings that all notifications are enabled. I am of course going to be back next week, so until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.